Hey guys, you're watching Let's Talk About Prepping. In this video, I want to share a few things that I picked up at a recent trip to the grocery store that are somewhat prepping related, including especially this pan here in the middle. Now, these razor blades are just a really nice thing to have around for your razor knife. They give you a lot of really fresh, really sharp edges to do really fine cutting. And as they dull, you can set them aside for later whenever you're going to do some less accurate work. So I like to keep ahead of myself and have plenty of those around. I also like to keep stocking up on this kind of stuff. It's just going to be really handy for a lot of situations. For quarantine, for sealing your home against airborne threats, uh, for keeping areas clean whenever you have to do messy work and you don't want to worry about using a lot of cleaning products to clean up after it, you just want to lay this out and just dispose of it afterwards or clean it later uh, in a more handy fashion. Anyways, pretty sure if I remember correctly that was a dollar or just right around a dollar. Isopropyl alcohol is just really good to have around for sanitation purposes. I like to take the labels off of things and just a little squirt of that and a stiff rub pretty much gets the job done. So yet again, I like to stay ahead of myself on things that I find handy in my everyday life now and which I can think of prepping uses for. Now when I go to the store, I often look around for things that I think might be handy for the prepping type stuff. and. An actual stainless steel container is sort of hard to come by. It's actually one of those things I've almost wondered if there's a conspiracy, not a conspiracy, but if people would rather have you purchase cheaper stuff that's not as handy in a lot of situations. Because I've noticed that good steel objects are sometimes hard to find. They're often zinc or aluminum counterparts for the same thing that just don't hold up as long. Um, people just seem more interested in offering the cheaper object and not even bothering to produce the hardier object for those who are willing to pay more for it. Um, even just a simple stainless steel water bottle that is not vacuum uh, double walled is pretty hard to come by even in camping stores. I recently found one at a backpackers uh, specific store and I picked it up even though I have a few stainless steel options because I personally believe that for your container part of the five C's essentials of survival, uh, a nice steel container is a really good option. Now, when it comes to this, I was just browsing and I happened to notice it and that it's for a really decent price. I think it was 667 or something like that for how much volume it has. Um, your $5 stainless steel cups or bottles, I'm pretty sure, are quite a bit smaller than this. Uh, and even though this is aluminized steel, which means that it has aluminum on it, it's sort of coated, and a lot of people would sort of cry over that because that's going to have a cumulative effect on you, I wouldn't really be using this in that many survival situations, hopefully. And people already bake with this, although they're not necessarily using an open flame, which is much more oxidizing. But I'm really not worried about that kind of thing if it's just going to get me by in a survival situation. So the reason that this struck my interest is the very same reason that you use a bunt pan to, cake, to bake a cake. Um, this spire in the middle here allows the heat to get into the rest of the cake. You would use this for a moist cake that is less likely to cook properly in the middle. So you just sort of put that in there and the ring bakes more thoroughly because the heat is able to penetrate from the center. And that's what got me interested in it. I sort of think that this will actually boil water or cook things in a shorter period of time than would your normal cup or bowl shape. And I really don't think that that gain in efficiency is going to be a huge factor in the survival type situation, but I do like to offer things like this that are 
slightly scientifically minded. Uh, so it feels a little corny uh, presenting it like that. But I do like the idea of this and I do want to test it with a similar volume uh, container to see if it does actually boil a few cups of water faster than just a flat bottom pan does. And anyways, I did end up thinking about something that might be valuable with this. And that is as a water fetching system. Now, bear with me a second here. All right, so these don't come with a hole drilled in the middle. My thought is your cordage, your other of the five C's of survival, is passed through the hole in the middle. Now, in this case, that's loud. Now, in this case, you'd actually want to use chain because if you're going to suspend it over a fire, which might be the idea, you wouldn't want to use paracord. But if you were trying to fetch water from a source that you couldn't, couldn't climb down to, or from a well, I think that that would do pretty nicely. I could think of a few situations that that might do pretty nicely in. And as you probably noticed, I would also like to add that aside from needing to have a nut to pass through here, you could achieve the same thing using the powerful rare earth magnet that hopefully you keep around in your preps and maybe even in your get home or bug out bag. Anyways, just a couple of good little prep ideas that I thought I would share with you guys. Thanks for hanging in for that. Thanks for watching and stay safe out there.